I don't feel right about putting a company on my racing suit, um, on my race car and promoting them if they're, you know, not doing good things for the environment. So that's been really, really difficult for me. Um, and I really hope I can find some more eco-friendly companies to work with. I'm trying to work with, you know, many eco companies rather than one big company so that it costs less. You know, if I have five companies sponsoring my car rather than one big one, it costs a lot less. Um, so my goal is to sort of work with a lot of green companies um, and that way it brings the cost down quite a bit. And that way I can use my race car at the racetrack to sort of call to action those 75 million NASCAR fans, you know, those 30 million IndyCar fans. Um, I want to carry eco messages on my race car and call them to action and ask them to do something every time I hit the racetrack. I want to have a purpose, whether it's, you know, an LED light bulb on the hood of my car and I get out and I say, I'd love for the 100,000 fans here at Daytona and the millions of people tuning in on television to use energy efficient light bulbs. And if each of you change out one bulb, you know, calculate how many pounds of CO2, tons of pounds of CO2 we can keep out of the atmosphere. And then the next race to run something on the hood of my car, like no paper, no plastic. And I think a lot of people aren't aware, we throw away between 500 billion and a trillion plastic bags every year. And we're recycling less than 1% of them. And they're ending up in their oceans and it's really an environmental disaster, so I'm kind of a plastic bag hater. <laughs> and um, so I really feel like, you know, I can use my race car as a vehicle to talk to all of the race fans. And um, I don't want to waste that hood space on other things. I'd like to have it be meaningful. What are some of the most disturbing issues that you know about the environment which you really would like to see changed the soonest? that are the most urgent? I really like to stress uh, what you're eating. Um, I don't know how many people realize what an effect it has, what's on your dinner plate. Um, actually, more greenhouse gases are created by the animal industry, livestock for food that we eat, um, than all the planes, trains, race cars, ships, you know, any fossil fuel based transportation, all that put together doesn't add up to the amount of greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere from livestock. Um, methane is 21 times more heat trapping than CO2. The livestock creates a lot of methane and that's a big deal. Not only that, um, but a lot of the rainforest that's getting cut down, which not only are you, you know, losing an oxygen source, um, you're losing carbon sequestration, you're also losing lots of medicines that we may not have even discovered. I mean, the rainforest is full of biodiversity. That's where I think 70% of the cancer fighting drugs that we know of have come from. That's where we find it. Um, so we're cutting down, you know, thousands of acres of rainforest without even knowing what we're losing. And that's really frightening to me. And, you know, we're losing lots of species that we probably haven't even discovered. Um, so it's not just about the oxygen. It's not just about the carbon sequestration. It's also about the biodiversity um, and what we're losing. And, and a lot of the rainforest that's being cut down is being cut down for livestock. Um, so yeah, meat eating is, um, is very bad. Um, I read a stat somewhere that said, I don't know if it's true or not, but I read a stat that said, you know, you're better off driving a Hummer and being vegetarian than you are driving a Prius and eating meat because eating meat has more of an effect. Um, so I know not everybody in the world is going to go vegetarian. I'm realistic. Um, but I like to stress for people to try the meat substitutes. I have a lot of meat eating friends that I've turned on to, you know, the meat substitutes. They make some really great stuff now that, um, is very hard for meat eating people that I know to even tell the difference. Um, and maybe it's just making a small commitment, like one day a week, I'm not going to eat meat. Um, just those small things, you know, if millions of people do that, you don't have to be vegetarian, but to just try and cut back on your meat, that can make a really big difference. So it's the small things that we do multiply by millions that's really going to have a big impact. And so vegetarian stuff is a big, big flag I like to wave. Was it difficult for you to make the transition to vegetarianism? No, because I went vegetarian when I was a little girl. So no, it wasn't hard at all. Um, you know, I was only vegan when I was in college. But yeah, I, I was an animal lover. I am an animal lover now. I have been since I was a kid. Grew up riding horses and being around cows in Minnesota. And, you know, they were my friends. They were not um, something that I felt like I wanted to kill and eat. Um, so I yeah, I just I just I can't do that. It's it's something in my in my heart that I feel for animals. 
Um, so, you're, so your parents are meat eaters, and you were a little girl, and what made you make the transition as a little girl actually, to go away from meat? Actually, my mom was vegetarian at the time. She went vegetarian as well. Um, at one point, all of my sisters were vegetarians as well. So um, I have two vegetarian nieces, um, you know, one who's never eaten meat in her entire life. She's never even tried it. So I think that's fantastic, and, you know, I think vegetarianism is growing. I'd be curious to see, like, what the stats are of how many more vegetarians there are now than there were 20 years ago. Um, but I hope that that's growing, and uh, I'm proud to be vegetarian. And at what age did you become vegetarian? Um, I think that started when I was six. At six? Yeah. And did, did your mother say, you know, no more meat for you, or did you say, Mom, I don't want to eat this anymore? No, I mean, I, I remember her explaining to me what meat was. I was, um, I was at a Wendy's. And I was eating a It's a great place to explain what meat is when you're at a Wendy's, by the way. Well, I was sitting there. I mean, I think when you're a child, you don't really understand. Um, you don't understand what meat is. You know, it's just food when you're a kid. And, uh, you know, I was eating a hamburger, and, and I asked what it was from, and she said it was from a cow. And I was like, oh, you know, like how cheese and milk is from a cow. And she was like, no, you know, and she was trying to explain it to me and I remember you know it was so traumatic for me that I, I can actually see the actual table we were sitting at in my head because it was so burned in my head when I realized what she was saying that it was like basically a dead piece of flesh from like a part of the cow I remember just dropping my hamburger and being horrified my mom went vegetarian and I believe my sisters were vegetarian for quite some time um, I think one of my sisters still is vegetarian or mostly vegetarian. Um, she was vegetarian through both of her pregnancies with my two nieces who are also vegetarians. Um, so it's kind of a trend in my family that I really like. My dad's mainly vegetarian now, um, but he wasn't growing up. You know, he grew up in Germany. My husband's probably 99% vegetarian now. He grew up in New Zealand, so he grew up, you know, eating lots of sheep and lamb. And, um, you know, I think once in a while when he goes home, he'll have some meat. But uh, we don't bring meat into our house, and, uh, and I'm really proud of that. I know you like kiwis. I'm not sure if you like your husband because he's a kiwi or if that helps you to like him even more than you would have liked him if you weren't a kiwi. I decided I was at a farmer's market this morning, and there's this farmer. He's 87 years old, and he sells local fruit, and uh, I actually brought you something. Oh. First of all, if you want to want to hold that, it's oh. a little kiwi man that he Thank that he drew. You. Sure. I also brought you. I brought you a bag. It's in a it's in a biodegradable so bag. I made sure it's biodegradable. If I brought you a bunch of kiwis. <laughs> here's so here's several others. This one actually, he said, "Tell her that I sat on it." So I. <laughs> This is an 87-year-old guy. He's been a farmer for years. That's and the other thing is, these are carob. I don't know if you've ever had these. I ha well, I've had, like, carob chips. I picked know? these from a tree. So I gave you some carob pods, so and these actually... Eat it when uh, it's like this let me show you. Thing. Here, hold my microphone. Okay. Let me show you. So this is carob. Okay. And uh, what you do is, you simply... I'm eating one of yours. Okay? It's you sweet. Just eat it naturally like that. sweet. Okay. Unlike chocolate that's bitter, right. this is naturally sweet. You can eat this. Great. And it tastes like chocolate. And there are seeds in it. Be careful because there are these tiny little seeds. You don't want to eat the seeds? You don't want to eat the seeds, people. No. Okay. They'll break your teeth. Oh. The seeds, supposedly, <laughs> these were used as a measure of weight years ago. Carrot, carob. Yes. Oh, So they're yes. uniform in shape and size. Here's a little, let me pull this out. Got to be careful of the seeds, but you can eat the pods. So these are the seeds, the tiny little seeds. They're all uniform shape and size. Mm -hmm. And anyway, don't eat these. Okay. But uh, you can grow these. <laughs> you know, you can grind them Fantastic. and probably make a powder. So I've got you some carob pods too. So now you have oh, kiwis and carob pods for your trip so home. That is so sweet. You can nibble <laughs> these on the plane. And I know how great plain food is. Yes. So you probably won't touch these because you'll probably enjoy the plain food even more. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. There's no <laughs> meals on planes unless you fly first class. So anyway, so I got you some kiwis and some uh some That is pods. so sweet yeah, sure. of you. Thank and, uh, you. I'm so glad we were able to do this today and yeah, talk to you. And it was really very fun. Very inspiring. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. Good to be here. Great. Thank you. Uh, this is Ken Spector, and this is Leilani Munter. And uh, this is Leilani's new toy, or <laughs> food toy. My kiwi and uh, locally grown kiwis <laughs> from an 87-year-old farmer who's darn proud of his kiwis. And uh, you got some carapods from Los Angeles. So, so cool. enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Take care.